Welcome folks to the first meeting in September, the September 6th meeting in 2023 for the Aries Working Group. This is a hyperledger call, so the antitrust policy and the code of conduct are in effect. Um, and please be mindful of those and please uh, bring up any issues that uh, you detect that need to be solved if no one else does. Um, link is in the chat and you're welcome to make any adjustments to the agenda. Uh, add yourself to the attendees list or any other changes that are useful for the community. Is there anyone new here today that would like to introduce themselves? Well, we are glad you're here. Uh, announcements. Uh, Didcom Users Group is a second, third, and fourth Monday. Um, and so this next uh, Monday will be that. And there's the link to the schedule with the meeting notes there. Um, and uh, note about uh, did WebS, uh, Stephen, is, is, does this need to be carried or should we drop it for now since it's been on a couple weeks? Um, sorry. Uh, let's see. Did WebS. Yep. No, uh, re I was just reading the note. Repo is still there. I just, I can announce that we now have a Hyperledger Labs for an implementation of it. Cool. And, um, work proceeds on a weekly basis towards uh, a first release. Cool. So anyone interested can contact me. So leave it for today and then we'll we can move it next time. Okay. Uh, Indie Summit is tomorrow. Yeah. Um, you register there. Uh, there's the times. There'll be all sorts of discussions about all things indie. Uh, please join if you have an interest in indie. Um, and uh, October 10th and 12th is IIW. Uh, that is next month, a little over a month away. And please consider that if you uh, are able. That's a fantastic place for ongoing conversation on a wide variety of identity related topics. And then one more um, the Hyperledger Member Summit is October 23rd in San Francisco and Tokyo. San Fran, uh, Tokyo? Really? Yeah. One or the other, don't go to both. Yes. Are you gonna be Are you gonna be doing that uh, live aid jet across to both things, uh, Stephen? <laughs> Perhaps not. Stephen's gonna virtually attend both from somewhere. I'm teasing. I don't even okay. know if I'm attending either, maybe. Uh, excellent. Other announcements that we should have on our list, but don't. Uh, any projects want to share release uh, status or work updates? There is lots of work going on. Appreciate all of that. And for those new here, there are a variety of sub meetings for various types of projects for uh, Rust and for uh, Akapai and for um, AFJ and uh, Bifold. There's all sorts of meetings going on. Um, and so this is only sort of the main one where we kind of discuss main topics, but all of the specific code base oriented meetings uh, exist elsewhere. Um, just to help you be aware of that. Uh, we should definitely kill this. Need to go through here and update periodically. Okay. Um, uh, on the list for discussion topics, a quick marketing update by Alex, um, a discussion of where we are on unqualified dids and the path to get there. Um, uh, Steven has some topics around push notification. I would like to talk about Didcom v2 and I'll highlight that issue 717 uh, came up and was requested for some meeting time and that is also on the uh, list for today and for discussion uh, as part of the unqualified dids transition because of its effect on dead exchange. Um, that is uh, that's what we have for the agenda. Are there any changes we should be making? Additions, subtractions, substitutions? Uh, Sam, I would say you should flop, flip the did common push notifications, put that together with the unqualified. Okay. We'll do other changes. All right, Alex, you warned us it would be brief. Oh, first announcement, <laughs> there's a new calendar. There's a new meeting link. Um, this is done periodically. Uh, Sean probably has, uh, has detailed reasons, but there's reasons. Hyperledger manages the, the community rooms and it's uh, helpful to have them not collide with each other. We have been using a different link and there is a new link. So if you have, like me, copied the working group call 
from the Hyperledger calendar to your own, uh, then please go delete your copy and recopy, and that way you have the new meeting link. Um, and uh, please spread the word. We'll try to be sensitive to that in the next couple times um, to, uh, to help people find the meeting again um, if, they, uh, if they follow that same pattern. Also, if someone wants to fix that calendaring sync problem for all of the universe, we'd all be grateful. Thanks. Uh, so that, that meeting, uh, new links, um, I should add it here in case someone reads the notes. Okay. Um, awesome. Uh, Alex. Brief update on marketing. Thank you. We take up the most page space in the discussion topics and we got the least to say. So 30 seconds. Uh, a combination of a shorter work week in North America and some of the high priority stuff means these are the same items from last week. Um, but to what you said, Sam, as subgroups, we have the Aries Marketing Working Group last Tuesday of every month. Everyone's welcome to come to that. And if you're interested in exploring more, the items are there on the page. I won't take your time now. Any feedback, please reach out to Helen or myself. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate that. Um, unqualified dids. This has been a topic over the last couple of weeks for good reason. It's it's something that is acting as a blocker for forward progress and that we need to uh, just retire as old behavior in the community that we're not doing anymore. Um, um, I wanted to, uh, to kind of review uh, just briefly what we had talked about previously. Um, and I, I probably should have left the meeting links in when I summarized, but there, there's a, this is uh, landed into a couple of, of, uh, of things. Um, we had discussed previous methods of how to translate dids into pure dids and a handful of other things, and, um, and we uh, found our way to a, a uh, we believe, a cleaner solution, and that is the introduction of the did rotation protocol. Uh, Stephen, I saw your comments, but not fast enough to, to get them edited in today. Um, here, is, um, uh, here is that, uh, that PR in, in Aries RFCs, um, and, uh, and I've incorporated some feedback, but Stephen, uh, not yours yet. Um, but what this does is it adds did rotation into didcom v1. Didcom v2 already has this, uh, but we're finding it incredibly useful for a couple of things, including not only uh, solving the unqualified did issue, but also uh, to uh, because you can notify the other party that you're using a, a, a fully qualified did, um, but also a transition to didcom v2, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and so that is there. Also worked by Daniel um, Bloom uh, for did peer four. Um, and, and this was, uh, uh, we, we covered this last time, the, the goal of did peer four or the sort of the realization was that uh, the combination of did peer two and three was both lossy um, in the types of information that you could record um, and that the approach of having a long and a short form, which is an idea similar to uh, what has been done in did ion or, or the other side tree stuff, um, was a really uh, was a really much simpler way to solve this particular problem in the sense that you can pass uh, more or less a, a, a did doc um, encoded as part of the long form and have a short form that then is more efficient uh, you know to include in every message um, and then the combination of these two mean that it's pretty easy to rotate away from these unqualified dids um, because you can simply include the relevant keys that you're using in a did document uh, pass a did rotation message and now those aren't in use anymore for that particular relationship and we have a way to move forward. Um, we, uh, that's a really brief overview. Um, we didn't have enough time, uh, sufficient time for, for full questions uh, last week against uh, what we talked about. Um, and so I wanted to make sure we had enough air time to, uh, to answer any questions or, or concerns, uh, particularly if folks think this is a bad idea, we really need to hear it. Um, um, now, uh, given that we had that. So hopefully you've had a chance to review the call from last week um, or, and uh, or everything else. But if you have any questions, um, please ask them now about did rotation and did peer four um, as, as advancements that, that help solve specific problems. Um, Sam, um, Timo's comment in um, on the PR seems to be the most serious issue. It sounds like Daniel responded that it's not really a concern, but uh, I would, wouldn't mind getting your view on that. I don't think it's a problem, but having someone like Timo um, 
suggest it's a, a serious security issue. Oh, is, a is this in, is this in uh, did peer four? Uh, I saw it in email. Shoot. Um, it, it, it had to do with the, um, that he's thinking this means we, we transition from key based. Um, we wouldn't be shoot. I don't know where it is, but um, it, it basically was implying that you wouldn't have to have the private key in order to take over a, a, you could just issue a did without having the private key and without proving ownership of the private key. Yeah. Oh, maybe that was in here. Um, shoot. No, wasn't that one. Shoot. I'm so sorry. There's a, there's a Timo comment. Uh, maybe go to, I'm, I'm going to search my emails, uh, my trash to see where, where that was, but it, I, I believe the issue is addressed. I just, um, wanted to make sure people weren't thinking that it was, um, troublesome. Okay. Um, sorry about so, that. No, that's fine. I'm going to, um, I'm going to relink this. I probably should not have dropped the link when I when I brought it over here. Um, this is for did pure four. Um, and here's the did rotate protocol. Um, be, be, given how important these are, definitely some attention, particularly if you're an implementer um, or but uh, but everyone uh, having eyes on this is a good idea. And, and while Stevens briefly searching his email for that, um, the, the, the fourth item here, um, we, uh, there is a community coordinated update to solve the unqualified dids. It, it describes the pattern using the old approaches that we were uh, going to use. And so one of the, our steps to completion here is, is, uh, is to have me update that community coordinated update to reflect the new strategy um, so that uh, after these are, are created, we can use the community coordinated update uh, mechanism that we have in order to kind of keep track of where we are as a community on the adoption of this. Um, and that way we can, uh, we know when we're ready to take steps beyond. Um, the did rotation protocol is is uh, fairly simple, um, and did peer four is also pretty darn straightforward. Um, there is an implementation that, that Daniel has, um, but uh, even if you're producing a raw implementation, it uses you know base 58 encoding and a handful of other very common things um, that uh, that avoid language issues uh, per things that we've learned in the past. Um, and so even a purely uh, brand new implementation of did peer four. Um, it should be relatively easy, although you may not have to do that, um, you know, based on the on the code that that, that exists. Um, and then they did peer spec. Um, we we are proposing that we deprecate uh, after we um, add did peer four that we deprecate all of the uh, previous uh, algorithms that are part of did peer. And um, I saw just briefly, and I and I have just seen this now. Can we just um, to find a, do, a new did method instead of uh, doing this. Um, and, uh, and there's some discussion here that, uh, that, um, that, that points to this. The, the thing that I have an affinity for the did peer spec is that people understand what you mean. Um, and so the, while technically having a different uh, did method would work well, it was probably a mistake to call one single did method a pure did method. There should have been something like did static or something else. Um, and, and we could have done that. We still can, but then we have to make sure that we cleanly message that, that there, could, there can be a handful of pure did methods and then specify the exact one that you're talking about. And this is something that, that Daniel uh, Bloom and I have debated a lot um, about the right way to approach this. Um, just because of that exact issue that, that Timo brings up. So I'm sympathetic to the issue and I'll have to make sure that I read this thoroughly and, and comment in line um, on that particular issue, but uh, but yeah. Um, okay, Sam. Um, yeah. I definitely would argue keeping did peer and we get to four and deprecate the other ones. Um, the it, issue 717 seems to be related. Yeah, yeah, this one here. Yeah. That's where the comment is that was posted this morning, and um, Daniel replied. Um, that last one. Oh, I'm not seeing the response, but yet I did see the, a, a response. Maybe he replied via email instead of via the ticket. Weird. Anyway, um, I do. I do want to discuss this, and I can give some brief background okay. before we. Okay. Good. 
before before we jump to 717 does anyone have okay, any questions sorry about that no yeah you're totally good um does anyone have any questions or comments about did rotation or did peer four that we've discussed and don't worry about asking a a, a a question you think that everyone else knows the answer to they probably don't um and so if you have a question it's uh we need to make sure that we we all understand this um as clear as possible even if you'd like uh, just a, a, a summary or you know some more description on a particular topic, that would be a, a very valid question as well. Maybe just a piece of advice I, I, I would be looking for as a, you know from an RSV6 uh, ROS implementation perspective. So we we unlike other frameworks. Uh, we started adding did exchange only relatively recently, a couple months ago. So, you know, historically we've been using, uh, supporting only connection protocol. And so from, from what I'm seeing right now, it, it, it seems like that things are kind of moving underneath the did exchange right now quite heavily. So, uh, so our current thinking is that uh, we'll probably wait a bit until things settles probably with the DP4. And only then we'll kind of, uh, I guess, uh, you know, merge this stuff in a code base or I don't know. If, if, we, if we merge it earlier, we would probably mark it as experimental or uh, uh, not stable yet. Th does this make approach make sense? As, as it seems like things are yet kind of finalizing with uh, the components which did exchange is using being the did peer. I, I think that's wise. I think that um, I, I I think given the timeline and the goals that we have, the creation of the community coordinated update and agreement upon it as a community, I think is the right signal that things have settled enough that they won't be changing anymore. Um, and so I also recognize that things have been have been moving really fast here. Um, there is some urgency that I'll sp uh, that I'll talk about when we get to Didcom V2, um, and and really what. The mistake was is that we didn't apply energy on this earlier, which means that it's a little bit under pressure now uh, to accomplish this and things are moving fast as we try to find the right solution. Um, there's been a lot of debate, both internal to my head, but also with other people about the right approach here. Uh, did peer four versus the other things that we're doing. Um, and, uh, and and the, the one um, consolation that I have, or that I think uh, is the most important piece is that I believe the solution we have now is substantially simpler and less prone to error uh, and, and sort of solves more fundamental problems, but in a simpler way than what we started from. So, so that's a little wordy, Patrick, but I think your approach of, of uh, holding off just for a, a minute um, on, on these sorts of things is probably a good idea um, in the sense that it will, it will help things settle a little bit, um, but I don't anticipate that delay being very long. Um, I think that uh, within uh, you know a week or two uh, we can be to the point where uh, where this uh, coordinated update is is uh, locked in, all the you know uh, changes and there isn't any controversy or, or major discussion points around around the, the things that are related, and we'll have a, a clear execution path um, around uh, around this effort um, that will that will bring that together. Does that answer mm -hmm. your question? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Maybe maybe one more uh, short one. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not maybe not the, not the best meeting for it. There's I know there's meeting for AAPH, but uh, I don't know what's the if you're aware of what's the current state of uh, did exchange in AATH. If uh, I know that in Akapai, I have a colleague Mira who was kind of uh, testing our did exchange implementation against Akapai, but the Akapai version was some sort of branch build or something like that, and and I think AFJ was uh i think AFG didn't have the back channel support for did exchange i'm not sure about that so if you know anything about these uh these back channel implementations and, and kind of their status so um the did exchange is supported in akapai what's not is it akapai is still using unqualified dids and we're in the midst and i think what was being tested was using peer dids and and we're in the midst of that one. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. He was. That's what the issue is. We there. are directly started with peer dids. He, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So I thank you for bringing that up because it, I, there was a needed item here that wasn't on my list. Um, yes. After we met the community coordinated update, 
um, you know, uh, making sure that the Airs Agent test harness is ready exactly. and able to support those things will be hugely valuable to the community in in sort of pre-testing or individually, or I mean, not individually, but but testing uh, these actions, uh, you know, between different software packages together. So that was absolutely needed to be included here, and I had not, uh, I had not. So thank you, Patrick, for bringing that up. Yeah, thank you. This is also going to help uh, put a, there's a handful of blockers that we have kind of ignored as a community for too long. Unqualified DIDs is another one. Uh, moving to did copy 2 is is another one which has a dependency on this. And so the, there's a handful of things that uh, I believe need some urgent attention. And, and that's why there's been so much focus on this right now, um, because these are the things preventing us from move, moving forward in really important ways. Um, other questions, thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Patrick, for those um, other questions uh, of any of any nature. Awesome. Uh, please do comment uh, on these uh, these issues or, or PRs um, to help further the conversation around these and we'll continue the work there um, as we as we uh, resolve these these issues. Um, so uh, issue seven, uh, Aries RFC uh, issue 717 uh, is an important uh, one that that, uh, that was brought up. Um, and I wanna provide some background here. Um, uh, this was brought up in February and we, we didn't give it enough airtime, uh, you know, prior to this, but it, it's highly relevant to the to the moving off of peer dids um, or at least unqualified peer dids, um, I should say. Um, in the manner that is that is more familiar with Didcom v2, in that um, in uh, so this is uh, this is did exchange, and you actually just patch as a, uh, you pass the did doc as an attachment um, right within the the did exchange uh, protocols uh, when you're using peer dids. Um, and the change that's happening uh, is that Didcom v2 uh, doesn't uh, allow for the direct passage of did, did documents, but requires that everything be contained within a did itself, which is part of the reason why uh, a, a peer did two um, and then now four was created is to solve that particular problem and, and not a special have special handling for peer dids as part of the protocol. And so in anticipation of moving to did come v2 um, going to fully qualify dids in the same manner is the is the is the goal that we're going after. And we've always allowed for dids to be passed here without an attached did document. There is text already uh, that, that's been in here for that. Um, but the, the question that was brought up was that uh, the, the attached did document actually has a signature across it in the examples here. Um, you can see that this is an attachment, um, but that there's a here's the did document itself. And then there is a JWS uh, here as, as part of that process. And this came historically from the connections protocol, which which also had something uh, similar there, but but that's been uh, officially deprecated for a while now. And data exchange has been the protocol that we've used to establish these relationships. So the question was asked, if we don't have the signature across the did document, is it still valid to do it? And I responded uh, in a really short way without an explanation here. Uh, some discussion ensued um, and I have some, um, and I have an explanation here. Um, and so, uh, and I, have to, I haven't read this comment within the last six hours. So I'll do that and just, I'll, I'll, I'll take a pause and do that in just a second so that I make sure I understand this argument. But um, what I am, am positing, uh, so first of all, I'll mention that, that the, the, the uh, requirement for a signed attachment is actually mentioned nowhere in the did exchange RFC. It's only present in the examples. Um, and because it was present in the examples, um, it has been assumed to, to be a required feature. Um, and that's probably my fault in the sense that I was not careful enough um, to either include the appropriate language indicating that that, that is optional uh, and, but not required. Um, uh, but, um, and, or, to, or to address it more explicitly instead of having it present in all of the examples but never actually mentioned a single time. Um, and so it mentions, for example, that the did doc attachment is optional and that it contains the did doc associated with it. Um, and, uh, and, and then, um, you know, it, it contains a link that the did peer, the did doc must be, you know, uh, indicated there, but there's actually no discussion of encryption or which key should be used or anything as part of that. And I, I have the text here, but I want to explain. Um, in the exchange of, the, uh, of these messages, 
it's important to understand or to have confirmation that the other party possesses the key that you think they do. Um, and so a signature is an obvious way to do that. If something is signed by a key, then you uh, can be sure that the party that sent you the message had access to the private key component of the public key in order to produce that signature. Um, but uh, this is uh, this is redundant um, in the sense that uh, the, the, the other way to be sure that the other party uh, is uh, possesses the private key is that they were able to decrypt information that you sent to them. Um, and so if you encrypt something to their private key, you know, using their public key, and they respond to you <clears throat> containing with a message that contains information or that uses information present in that encrypted message, then you can gain confidence through the fact that they now know the things you told them um, that they under, you know, that they do in fact possess that private key. <clears throat> and so that's what I explain here. I also mentioned the, the nothing about signature requirements as present. Um, and so the, the fact that a signature was required at all in either message is actually, um, is actually an error, probably on my part, that it was left in there particularly unexplained. Um, and I think that's uh, caused some of the confusion. So having said that, I'm going to pause for just a minute and read Timo's comment to make sure that I understand what he's talking about. Um, this is so Timo is mentioning here that it means that the public key in the thread ID is now the basis of trust in, in the exchange. It's far more than just the thread ID. Um, for example, uh, if I they have no idea, uh, the, 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 the you know, if I'm responding, if I scan a QR code, for example, or I'm responding to an invitation then the other party has no idea who I am. I send them the information about who I am in a message that's encrypted to that key that contains uh, the did, which of course has the, the my public key and the service endpoint in order to return a message. And so the, uh, the, the, the information that I'm passing to them, uh, the thread ID, um, and the uh, and the the service endpoint. In fact, the threat ID is the weakest of those. Um, uh, all provide the assurance that they were able to decrypt the message that I actually sent. Um, and so we definitely need to add some commentary and some correction to the data exchange protocol at the at the end result of this thread to clarify that. Um, but um, Timo is claiming before that we had a cryptographic assurance previously, implying that we don't now. And what I'm positing is that we we always had redundant cryptographic assurance, but that we we have not uh, we don't have any loss of cryptographic assurance uh, because of what's actually happened here. Um, the 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 reason why I'm I'm going this way is that the um, instead of staying with the redundant cryptographic assurance, is that we'd have to produce a deviation from the protocol. Um, in the sense that there would have to be something extra to sign if you didn't, in fact, uh, uh, you know, pass a DID document with a signature on it. Um, and I've also discussed passing the DID document with a with the signature on it. But now this has introduced new new error states where um, you're if there is a discrepancy between the DID document that you actually passed with a signature on it and the DID document that is resolved independently. There's a new error state where they can differ, and now it's uh, the you know which one is being used by the other party can produce some some un, some variable states that are that uh, that are potentially very hard to debug. Um, and so I haven't obviously yet responded to Timo, and I will, and I have no desire to lose to lose cryptographic confidence at all. Um, what I'm asserting is that we we've never actually lost it and never actually needed the signature to require it. As part of that process, and I will uh, I'll attempt to do so um, in, a, uh, in a in a more lengthy way here to make it uh, clear to Timo and anyone else that's curious. Um, if I'm wrong on this, I really need to know. Um, and so, if your evaluation of the protocol um, is that we do in fact need the signature, and that the assurances that I'm arguing are already exist are in fact wrong, then please do speak up. 
um, either in a meeting or uh, in the in the thread here, so that we can make sure that we don't make any mistakes um, uh, in the in the processing of this, uh, because we really don't need any. I mean, you never need mistakes of that kind, but it's, it's still quite important. Um, any questions, comments at all about this issue, even if it's uh, just seeking clarification or trying to understand what's going on? I've said a whole bunch of words. Um, I haven't taken a look at the protocol, so I'll I'll do that. I guess my question would be, is there a reasonable assumption that um, it's possible, like based on what this protocol is used for and what the, the message, available messages are, that it would be reasonable to guess um, the, the presence of a message, even if you can't decrypt it, um, would you be able to determine the thread ID and say, okay, well, I, I can glean what the public key might be and jump in as, as Timo suggests. If there are a plethora of messages and there's no jumping off point for you know, determining how to jump in, then I think I agree with your assertion. But if you can kind of eavesdrop and even without knowing the contents of the message, be able to assume that they must be doing this, and I can learn these other things, then I can jump in, then there's a problem. But I haven't looked closely at the protocol, so I, I will do that, but that's the question, kind of the theoretical question I would pose. Um, I think that's, that's excellent. The other thing that we may be able to do is highlight the importance of having uh, sufficiently unguessable thread IDs. Um, the implementations that I'm aware of use UUIDs, um, which, are I in all advice I've read are sufficiently unguessable. Um, and there's also a timing aspect of this too, because there's very little that occurs prior to this exchange. So there's very little to grab onto um, to even know that a message was actually sent, um, you know, from that party in, in order to make that happen. Um, and so, um, that is the that is the thing there. The other thing that's actually kind of missing from this is that we never actually you know uh, dropped a flow diagram in here, which would be really useful. And so I may attempt um, a PR with a just simply adding a you know a, a basic UML like swim lane um, to uh, to help you know show the the actual exchange back and forth uh, to make that more visually clear. Um, but uh, but Warren, I would very much appreciate your evaluation of this. Um, any anyone else, of course, too. But um, uh, but uh, but this is this is an important issue. Um, I think we don't lose anything, um, but but uh, in in which case, no implementations actually uh, you know are required at all um, in, in that process. So, uh, <laughs> Sam, it Steven. would be good to have Timo outline what he actually means. I, I'm reading this, and I don't see what. From what I can tell, I think he's saying that if a hacker could get the invitation, they could respond to it. But that's always been the case and, and included whether that signature is there or not. I think uh, what he's assuming is that um, the this is only possible in the in, not in the request, but in the response of the protocol. So oh, this the, is the message okay. that actually goes from the inviter to the invitee. Okay. So it's uh, from the, the producer way. of the QR code in order, yeah, yeah, uh, to, to, to the consumer of the QR code. And then if they're able to guess um, the public key of the invitee and the thread ID uh, that they produced, that the responder is, produ is responding to, then they'd be able to convince the invitee that they are the inviter. Um, but that data has been encrypted by the... It, it has been. the inviter. It has been. So, yeah. So I'm assuming that that encryption is not breakable. What he's asserting, yeah. I think, is that they all they would need to do is um, is guess the thread and um, and 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 guess the 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 public key being used by the by the uh, um, by the uh, he's using different terms here, but by the invitee, meaning the scanner of the QR code. 
And I think that's a long shot. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't think it's going to be possible to guess um, unless you are, for example, reusing the same uh, did for every connection that you make, the other party would have to know that and they would have to guess your um, still have um, to even guess guess the thread ID because they they'd also have to guess the thread ID. So um, what he's basically saying is, is that he's far more comfortable with the idea that we're you're checking a direct signature across data in the message itself. Yeah. Um, then um, then on uh, then on the information in a previous message being not guessable. Um, my assertion is that the, is that the information in the previous message is sufficiently non guessable by like a long shot. That, that this isn't an immediate concern. Or it's not a concern at all. I shouldn't use immediate. That, that I, don't, I don't believe this is a concern. Um, and so uh, it's also, and you can, in the protocol here, no discussion of, in, of, of a signature across that did document is present here in any way. And so it's, uh, this is kind of a, a, a mistaken assumption because of, a, of an inconsistency between the examples provided in the, in the documentation for the protocol. I think we've gotten very comfortable and everyone for super good reasons is really nervous about removing a signature. Um, and so when it, when it was included uh, in error, then it, it's, you know, we, there's a suitable amount of caution about making sure that it's okay to remove that. And I think that's why the, 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 this, um, the concern is warranted. Um, I'm going to add a comment to, uh, to Timo's um, thing here to, to draw and be a little bit more explicit about what I mean. Um, and so, uh, and, and that'll probably help. And, and then, and then Warren, if you even, uh, I would appreciate a comment, even if you, no matter what you discover, if you discover nothing or you discover something, I mean, that way I know you've taken a look at it and that would be appreciated. Um, Will do. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? Um, again, to highlight, the reason this is so darn important is because in the conversion that we're about to execute with did peer four, we will not be passing any did documents as part of this, um, which means that we, we need to make sure that this is nailed down and we have this done correctly. Mm -hmm. So where before it was, a, it was an infrequent possibility, it's going to become the, the norm on every message, on every invitation. Um, and that's why it's listed in sort of this, this march to eliminate unqualified dids. Any other comments about uh, this before I talk about DIDCOM V2? Okay. Um, I uh, have to call Daniel Bloom out here because he did, uh, he brought up the fact that like, you know, in, in trying to figure out how to handle, handle the unqualified DIDs that we didn't even have a mapped path forward to actually adopt DIDCOM V2. And it's it, it's bothered me deeply to my soul. He was correct in pointing that out, and um, and I'm and I've thought a lot about it. One of the things that I like about uh, about the the did rotation aspect um, that he encouraged me to do um, was that it not only provides a way to move off of unqualified dids in a relatively elegant way and in a relatively flexible way, but it also provides us an onboarding path to to adopt uh, didcom v2. Uh, out of necessity, the service endpoints for DIDCOM v1 and DIDCOM v2 are different, um, and that allows you to specify which you support, and you can support them simultaneously, um, even on the same endpoint, although certainly a separate endpoints is another way of, of solving that particular problem. Um, and, uh, and the ability to, to rotate to a DID uh, with a DID document that contains a, a, a DIDCOM v2 endpoint, even in addition to a DIDCOM v1 endpoint, provides us exactly that on-ramp that we need to make that transition. Um, if you are, uh, you know, doing DIDCOM v1 only, you, your software adds support for DIDCOM v2, being able to message that to the connections that you actually have uh, means that uh, they can become aware and begin to use DIDCOM v2 as, as part of that transition, which makes it a much easier transition and it means that, that folks can adopt stuff on a much faster ba uh, you know, basis without having to necessarily wait for a community coordinated update to come along, which we only, uh, which we only use as a, as a last resort. Um, uh, I think that the 
length of time it has taken to adopt DIDCOM v2 has both been problematic for the ARIES project as well as problematic for, for DIDCOM v2 generally. As the largest deployment of DIDCOM v1, for obvious reasons, um, adoption of DIDCOM v2 within the ARIES uh, ecosystem, I believe, will be hugely important, um, not only because it helps solve a handful of issues, um, that we that we uh, that we've solved the didcom v2, but but not uh, you know hadn't solved the didcom v1. Um, but it also means that it gets less awkward when we're talking about protocols that are v1 oriented or v2 oriented, um, uh, and that is highly relevant even to, in did exchange protocols. And so um, my my life has become in increasingly awkward as I'm striving to both uh, help support the Aries community, uh, but also um advance didcom and and didcom v2 is what we're talking about in that in that manner and so uh it, it's really awkward uh, i have i've been you know requested a handful of times in different venues to teach people about didcom and the fact that i have to uh, speak to legacy didcom v1 um substantially because the the aries project is still uh, mostly in use of didcom v1 uh, that uh, it makes that an awkward discussion and, and really painful and, and uh, is not an encouraging factor for folks to considering whether a DIDCOM adoption would be a good idea, which of course such adoption would be helpful for the ARIES community. Um, and so um, the it's become increasingly awkward. Um, I With a, a solution in front of us um, that we still have uh, some wrinkles to make sure make clear or iron out, uh, but with a, with a clear roadmap in front of us, I'm feeling a lot of urgency around um, moving to DIDCOM v2. Um, we've partially solved that problem with DID rotation, so we've 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 uh, we're we're a half step ahead further than we were before. Um, but uh, but this is pretty darn important. We've we began sort of this latest phase of uh, community you know um, uh, efforts. Uh, you know, and, and focus on what we're going to adopt with the discussion of, of, of AIP3 or AIP next, right? The, the next one that doesn't really exist yet and what should actually be in it. And the more that I think about the urgency around DIDCOM v2, I think that we should target the minimum set of things required to adopt DIDCOM v2 um, uh, as soon as possible. And while it may be useful after that to then have a, another target that advances some other causes, I'm conscious that the, the larger the target, the harder and the longer it is to hit. Um, and that uh, and that narrowly focusing uh, on the minimum required DIDCOM v2 implementation so that we can officially deprecate DIDCOM v1 uh, is, is, I think, um, going to be the healthiest thing for our community. What that means is that in addition to the support of, of course, DIDCOM uh, v2, uh, you know, encryption and envelopes and, and the other things that are going on there, is that, of course, we uh, we have we're done with unqualified dids, um, but also the, the 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 protocols that had to be updated as a requirement of of of, uh, of the didcom v2 attachment changes and, and any other changes uh, are also adopted. Um, so that includes the um, the didcom um, uh, credential exchange protocols. Um, which of uh, which pass credentials as attachments, and those are not hugely substantial changes. The code should be relatively minor, uh, but moving to and, and having those be the, the the current standard for the protocols that everyone um, implements is, is a much better story to then go tell people, hey, Didcom's a thing, and here's the protocols that people are supporting, and if you build these, you'll be able to interoperate with the other existing software packages, including Aries, that uh, that also support these protocols. Um, that does mean that some of the other things that we have discussed uh, for adoption um, may not be included uh, in that uh, in that interoperability effort or in that advancement uh, effort for the community, but uh, but may help us focus in a, in a very real way on getting to uh, to DIDCOM v2 and over that hurdle. Once we are there, life becomes simpler uh, because we're we're no longer living in kind of a two version world. Um, that has has been a, a split of not only attention but uh, but a source of confusion for folks that are trying to approach the community and the technology and understand that. And so I wanted to bring that up today um, to sort of gauge feedback or thoughts um, and uh, about about this, um, and also to hopefully um, explain why there's such urgency around solving unqu the unqualified did problem and and then and then moving forward with this, um, so that. Uh, so that this becomes a thing that isn't a source of confusion anymore um, for for folks that uh, that want to adopt this technology. 
Um, the other aspect of that is that this year we've seen um, a huge groundswell of interest in protocols like the OpenID for VC protocols. And um, uh, those, uh, there's a lot of good that can come out of those protocols, particularly by helping people feel comfortable with verifiable credentials that have not felt comfortable with them before. But DIDCOM and, and Ari, the ARIES community, um, uh, as, a, as a huge part of that, remains one of the few places where the interaction models that we support extend beyond verifiable credentials to other things as well. And I believe that power is important. I believe that um, having a protocol that is capable of doing more than VCs, uh, VCs really well, um, uh, you know, without deficiency, but also uh, that, that goes beyond VCs as, a, as an application of that trust or as an application of that, um, of that portable uh, trusted data uh, that VCs allow is a really important thing to do. Um, and, and we need to be uh, in a better position to both teach and explain and help people understand the power of DIDCOM so that, uh, so that as these projects move forward, they understand uh, you know, better options and they understand better architectures um, that, can, uh, that can enable these, these sorts of things. Um, if done uh, carefully, meaning if you do OpenID um, uh, protocols with verifiable credentials and you involve DIDs, and you've selected a DID method capable of containing a service endpoint, there's a really nice adoption path for DIDCOM that allows them to, uh, to extend and, and add these things, even if they've made an initial choice to use a protocol that, that, uh, that is only solely focused on verifiable credentials. And, and that's some of the pressure that I, that I feel. Um, any uh, thoughts or comments, um, including ones that are in full disagreement, um, I, I really want to hear. Um, from the community about this about this issue about the urgency and the process of adopting DIDCOM v2. Uh, maybe just a, a quick check. Not super familiar with uh, DIDCOM v2, but uh, just to check, uh, DIDCOM v2 wouldn't have any impact on the other ARIES protocols like, you know, uh, credential issuance, proof verification, presentation protocol, this kind of stuff. This can this can go whether whether these messages go through DITCOM v1 or DITCOM v2 doesn't doesn't matter, does it? it? It only matters for protocols that have changes to them. And the largest change that affects credential, the, those protocols you spoke of, is how attachments are handled. There's a the DITCOM v2 has a simplified attachment mechanism. And there is an adjustment to the, how those attachments are done. Uh, everything else is as similar as possible. And so one of the things that in the DIDCOM v2 effort is to make sure that those versions of the protocols are hosted in the right place and are well understood um, so that as we target them for adoption, we can, uh, we can have them. There's an ongoing discussion um, about the sense that there's a handful of features in uh, the DIDCOM, uh, in, in the version two of those protocols, we have the dot one and the dot two release of those protocols that um, add other features like multiple issuance and verification. Um, and, and so we need to, um, uh, we need to uh, have, a, have another pass at those before we're ready. But because there are some um, fundamental changes to the, to the protocol, not a lot, um, there will be some changes necessary for the protocols that do use things like attachments. Sam, is it possible to have a convert V1 to V2 even with attachments, or does it fundamentally require that the protocol itself change? If you adopt some conventions, then you can do that, but it, but okay. uh, it's it's much simpler to not to. Um, there, there are ninety five percent of the message you can systematically convert between one message format and the other message format. Okay. Um, but um, but attachments, uh, because of the, how much variability we had in V1, um, makes it hard to, to systematically... Um, we had three ways of doing attachments in DIDCOM V1. And DIDCOM V2 selects one of those ways and makes it the only way. Um, and so, uh, and because the, the protocols that we wrote for credential exchange didn't use the one way that we selected, and th there's a lot of debate about which one to select, um, then, uh, then there, there, there is some adjustments required. And again, they're not very complicated. If you're familiar with the one protocol and you look at yeah, what needs to be yeah. done for the other protocol, it's it's not a significant amount of change. 
Um, but but it, it is it is some change. Other questions? Sam, I had a question. Did I understand correctly that you're saying because of the adoption of DITCOM or opening the door for DITCOM, your extent people will be able to extend um to go beyond credential exchange and the other protocols are focused on credential exchange. Did, did I understand that correctly? It opens the door for more, more meaning beyond credential exchange. Yes. Well, the doors has been open for some time. We have like the basic message protocol, for example, and, and other pro you know, the question answer protocols, another one just off the top of my head that, that are not protocols focused on credential exchange, but can benefit of course, from the trust established in a connection or in the data exchange during credential exchange. So, so I, the answer, the answer to your question is yes, although it's not a newly open door, this, this door has been open for a while, which has been one of the fundamental differences between the approach that DIDCOM has taken uh, and, and other protocols that are more narrowly focused on verifiable credentials. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. So the, so you've kind of answered my my question. So these other things were open already through DITCOM 1. So what is DITCOM 2? And sorry for my lack of knowledge here. No, that's okay. So what it's it's clear that, uh, that what I need to do, and it's been a long time since we've talked about Did, DITCOM v2, is is to do a review of, of what, what's new, what's changed, why, Etc. And and we'll do that in a in a, in a future meeting. Um, it there it, we get more official about some things. Um, we are closer. Uh, we are we are in, instead of just being close to a JWE in our encryption format, it's actually a JWE. Um, and so there's a there's a handful of of things like that that have been done. It's also simpler um, than than DIDCOM v1 is in a, in a number of ways that are that are I think pretty important. The other thing is that. Um, every every initial message contains all of the information necessary to set up a connection, which means there's actually no equivalent of the did exchange protocol in didcom v2 because that's capable of happening simply by the sending of any any protocol message at all. Um, and so that that means that uh, that the the beginning process of making something happening uh, is more efficient. Um, and fewer messages are required, and, and then relationships can persist to whatever length they want. In DIDCOM v1, we kind of had a full relationship that lasted a long time, um, and, uh, and, uh, or, or you had connectionless, and now there's a, a wider spectrum of things possible with, with a simplified mechanism. So didcom.org um, has uh, you know protocols here. Uh, we've got you know action uh, menu, basic message, um, some some data agreement protocols. Um, and uh, here's, of course, like the issue credentials. Uh, there's, you know, mediator coordination uh, related protocols listed here. Um, and here's question uh, answer um, as well, uh, you know, things that can actually happen over here. And, and this is not all the protocols that have been listed, but an example of the types of ones that we've that we've created. Um, so anyway, we're, we're over and, and we need to drop uh, and, and we'll have time for for more questions later. Uh, but um, but uh, thanks to everyone today. Um, I felt like I talked too much. I apologize. Um, but uh, but please do speak up um, uh, either in meetings or or via these other you know PRs or issues or things like that if you have both concerns or questions um, and we will work together to to figure them out and find the right answer. And I appreciate all of you and have a great week. Thank you. Have a good week. Thank you. Bye.